the Sultanate of Rum or Seljuk Sultanate of Rum, Persian, comma Seljukian I Rum, modern Turkish, Anadolu Selsuklu Devlti or Rum Sultanuk, was a medieval Turco-Persian, Sunni Muslim state in Anatolia. It existed from 1077 to 1307, with capitals first at Iznik and then at Konya. Since the court of the Sultanate was highly mobile, cities like Kayseri and Shivas also functioned at times as capitals. At its height, the Sultanate stretched across central Anatolia, from the shoreline of Antalya and Alanya on the Mediterranean coast to the territory of Sinop on the Black Sea. In the east, the Sultanate absorbed other Turkish states and reached Lake Van. Its westernmost limit was near Denizli and the gates of the Aegean Basin. The term Rum comes from the Arabic word for the Roman Empire. The Seljuks called the lands of their Sultanate Rum because it had been established on territory long considered Roman, that is Byzantine, by Muslim armies. The state is occasionally called the Sultanate of Konya, or Sultanate of Iconium in older Western sources and was known as Turkey by its contemporaries. The Sultanate prospered, particularly during the late 12th and early 13th centuries when it took from the Byzantines key ports on the Mediterranean and Black Sea coasts. Within Anatolia the Seljuks fostered trade through a program of caravanserai building, which facilitated the flow of goods from Iran and Central Asia to the ports. Especially strong trade ties with the Genoese formed during this period. The increased wealth allowed the Sultanate to absorb other Turkish states that had been established in eastern Anatolia after the Battle of Manzikert, the Danishmans, the Mangusek, the Saltukids, and the Artukids. Seljuk sultans successfully bore the brunt of the Crusades but in 1243 succumbed to the advancing Mongols. The Seljuks became vassals of the Mongols, following the Battle of Kozdag and despite the efforts of shrewd administrators to preserve the state's integrity, the power of the Sultanate disintegrated during the second half of the 13th century and had disappeared completely by the first decade of the 14th. In its final decades, the territory of the Sultanate of Rum saw the emergence of a number of small principalities or bulliks, among which that of the Osmanaglu, known later as the Ottomans, rose to dominance. In the 1070s, after the Battle of Manzikert, the Seljuk commander Suleiman bin Qutomish, a distant cousin of Malik Shah and a former contender for the throne of the Great Seljuk Empire, came to power in western Anatolia. In 1075, he captured the Byzantine cities of Nicaea, Iznik, and Nicomedia, Izmit. Two years later he declared himself Sultan of an independent Seljuk state and established his capital at Iznik. Suleiman was killed in Antioch in 1086 by Tutoshai, the Seljuk ruler of Syria, and Suleiman's son Kilij Aslan I was imprisoned. When Malik Shah died in 1092, Kilij Aslan was released and immediately established himself in his father's territories. He was eventually defeated by soldiers of the First Crusade and driven back into south-central Anatolia, where he set up his state with capital in Konya. In 1107, he ventured east and captured Mosul but died the same year fighting Malik Shah's son Memd Tapar. Meanwhile, another Rum Seljuk, Malikshah, not to be confused with the great Seljuk Sultan of the same name, captured Konya. In 1116 Kilij Aslan's son, Mesud I, took the city with the help of the Danishmans. Upon Mesud's death in 1156, the Sultanate controlled nearly all of central Anatolia. Mesud's son, Kilij Aslan II, captured the remaining territories around Shivas and Malatia from the last of the Danishmans. At the Battle of Mariokfalon in 1176, Kilij Aslan also defeated the Byzantine army led by Manuel Akumnews, dealing a major blow to Byzantine power in the region. Despite a temporary occupation of Konya in 1190 by German forces of the Third Crusade, the Sultanate was quick to recover and consolidate its power. After the death of the last Sultan of Great Seljuk, Duke Rule III, in 1194, the Seljuks of Rum became the sole ruling representatives of the dynasty. Cake whose raw eye seized Konya from the Crusaders in 1205. Under his rule and those of his two successors, Cake Uzai and Cake Badai, Seljuk power in Anatolia reached its apogee. Cake whose most important achievement was the capture of the harbour of Italia, 
Antalya, on the Mediterranean coast in 1207. His son Caicos captured Sinop and made the empire of Trebizond his vassal in 1214. He also subjugated Cilician Armenia but in 1218 was forced to surrender the city of Aleppo acquired from Al-Kamil. Caicobad continued to acquire lands along the Mediterranean coast from 1221 to 1225. In the 1220s, he sent an expeditionary force across the Black Sea to Crimea. In the east he defeated the Mangusics and began to pressure on the Artukids. Kekus Rortu, 1237-1246, began his reign by capturing the region around Dubka, but in 1239 he had to face an uprising led by a popular preacher named Barboishak. After three years, when he had finally quelled the revolt, the Crimean foothold was lost and the state and the Sultanate's army had weakened. It is in these conditions that he had to face a far more dangerous threat, that of the expanding Mongols. Mongol forces took Erdurum in 1242 and in 1243, the Sultan was crushed by Tbeu in the Battle of Kozdag, a mountain between the cities of Shivas and Ertzinkan and the Seljuk Turks were forced to swear allegiance to the Mongols and became their vassals. The Sultan himself had fled to Antalya after the 1243 battle, where he died in 1246, his death starting a period of tripartite, and then dual rule that lasted until 1260. The Seljuk realm was divided among Kekuzro's three sons, the eldest, Kekaz II, 1246-1260, to assumed the rule in the area west of the river Xilmak. His younger brothers, Kilij Arslan IV, 1248-1265, and Kekbad II, 1249-1257, were set to rule the regions east of the river under Mongol administration. In October 1256, Bayo defeated Kekaz II near Uxare and all of Anatolia became officially subject to Mong Khan. In 1260 Kekaz II fled from Konya to Crimea where he died in 1279. Kilij Arslan IV was executed in 1265 and Kekuz Raw III, 1265 to 1284, became the nominal ruler of all of Anatolia with the tangible power exercised either by the Mongols or the Sultan's influential regents. The Seljuk state had started to split into small emirates, beliks, that increasingly distanced themselves from both Mongol and Seljuk control. In 1277, responding to a call from Anatolia, the Mamluk Sultan Baybars raided Anatolia and defeated the Mongols, temporarily replacing them as the administrator of the Seljuk realm. But since the native forces who had called him to Anatolia did not manifest themselves for the defense of the land, he had to return to his home base in Egypt, and the Mongol administration was reassumed, officially and severely. Near the end of his reign, Kekus Raw III could claim direct sovereignty only over lands around Konya. Some of the Baliks, including the Ottomans in their very beginnings, and Seljuk governors of Anatolia continued to recognize albeit nominally, the supremacy of the Sultan in Konya, delivering the Kutba in the name of the Sultans in Konya in recognition of their sovereignty, and the Sultans continued to call themselves Fareddin, the pride of Islam. When Kekus Raw III was executed in 1284, the Seljuk dynasty suffered another blow from internal struggles which lasted until 1303 when the son of Kekus II, Mesud II, established himself as Sultan in Kayseri. He was murdered in 1307 as well as his son Mes'ud III soon afterwards. A distant relative to the Seljuk dynasty moment really installed himself as Emir of Konya. But he was defeated and his lands conquered by the Karamanids in 1328. The Sultanate's monetary sphere of influence lasted slightly longer and coins of Seljuk mint, generally considered to be of reliable value continued to be used throughout the 14th century, once again, including by the Ottomans. The Seljuk dynasty of Rum, as successors to the great Seljuks, based their political, religious and cultural heritage off the Perso-Islamic tradition even to the point of naming their sons with Persian names. Though of Turkic origin, Rum Seljuks patronized Persian art, architecture, literature, while they used Persian as a language of administration. Moreover, Byzantine influence in the Sultanate was also significant, 
since Greek aristocracy remained part of the Seljuk nobility, and the local Greek population was numerous in the region. In their construction of caravanserais, midrases and mosques, the Rum Seljuks translated the Iranian Seljuk architecture of bricks and plaster into the use of stone. Among these, the caravanserais, or hands, used as stops, trading posts and defense for caravans, and of which about a hundred structures were built during the Anatolian Seljuks period, are particularly remarkable. Along with Persian influences, which had an indisputable effect, Seljuk architecture was inspired by Christian and Muslim Armenians. As such, Anatolian architecture represents some of the most distinctive and impressive constructions in the entire history of Islamic architecture. Later this Anatolian architecture would be transmitted to Sultanate India. The largest caravanserai is the 1229 built Sultan Han on the road between the cities of Konya and Aksaray, in the township of Sultan Han depending the latter city enclosing 3,900 square meters. There are two caravanserais that carry the name Sultan Han, the other one being between Kayseri and Shivas. Furthermore, apart from Sultan Han, five other towns across Turkey owe their names to caravanserais built there. These are Alakahan in Kangal, Durigan, Hekimen and Kadnhan, as well as the township of Akan within Denizli metropolitan area. The caravanserai of Hekimen is unique in having Underneath the usual inscription in Arabic with information relating to the edifice, two further inscriptions in Armenian and Syriac, since it was constructed by the Sultan Kaqbadai's doctor, Hekim, who is thought to have been a Christian by his origins, and to have converted to Islam. There are other particular cases like the settlement in Gala site, contiguous to an ancient Hittite site, near Alaka. Founded by the Seljuk commander Hussein and Temerlu who had taken refuge in the region after the defeat in the Battle of Kozdag, and had founded a township comprising a castle, a midris, a habitation zone and a caravanserai, which were later abandoned apparently around the 16th century. All but the caravanserai, which remains undiscovered, was explored in the 1960s by the art historian Octaya Slanapa and the finds as well as a number of documents attest to the existence of a vivid settlement in the site, such as a 1463 dated Ottoman firman which instructs the headmaster of the Midris to lodge not in the school but in the caravanserai. The Seljuk palaces, as well as their armies, were staffed with gilams, youths taken from non-Muslim communities mainly Greeks from former Byzantine territories, although such a practice violated the Muslim law. The Gilam practice may have offered a model for the latter Def Sherm during the times of the Ottoman Empire. The dynasty. As regards the names of the sultans, there are variants in form and spelling depending on the preferences displayed by one source or the other, either for fidelity in transliterating the Persian-influenced variant of the Arabic script which the sultans used or for a rendering corresponding to the modern Turkish phonology and orthography. Some sultans had two names that they chose to use alternatively in reference to their legacy. While the two palaces built by Alad and Kikabadai carry the names Kibadabad Palace and Kikabadai Palace, he named his mosque in Konya as Alad and Mosque and the port city of Alania he had captured as Alai. Similarly, the Midris built by Kekhu's Rai in Kayseri, within the complex, Kalai-i, dedicated to his sister Jevanesib, was named Jayasai Midris, and the one built by Zedin Kikavasai in Shivas as Izadai Midris, 